What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. We are excited for another episode like this. In today's show, we are going to introduce you to an amazing podcast that lives on the Family family Made Network. It is Hot Marriage, Cool Parents. That's right. It's a show on our Family Made Network hosted by Jamie Otis Hayner and Doug Hayner. Yes. Who, honestly, that might have been one of the first podcast interviews we ever did, like mm-hmm. back in 2017, 18, before we had Drew. Yep. They do a fantastic job with their show, and it's been going on for quite a while. But you may know Jamie from season 16 of The Bachelor, or you may know them both from their reality show, Married at First Sight, where they met and got married all at once in 2014. Yes. Married at First Sight. Literally. Like, literally. That's how it went down. It is, and, <laughs> it is as you think it is. But it's so cool to hear their story because they're thriving. They yeah. love each other so much. They have beautiful babies together. We love that they are a part of our Family Made Network because of their transparent, raw, and real conversations around marriage, around parenting, and around kind of everything that happens in between. That's right. Jamie, if you follow her Instagram, yeah. she, keep, she keeps it real. They also recently launched a new season of their podcast, and we're invited to be guests on their show. We mm-hmm. were pumped about that. And we always have had such good conversations with Jamie and Doug because they're a really fun couple. But for this interview, we touched on our personal experience about the horrible sh- school shooting that happened here in Nashville. Um, and reliving that day was not fun, but um, mm-hmm. they asked some good questions about it. So I feel like it was a cathartic thing for us. Something that I love about Doug and Jamie and their podcast, especially when they do interviews, is... They have this beautiful beautiful way of going there with every topic and conversation and asking those questions that we're all curious about but we're too afraid to say. Mm-hmm. But they do it in such a genuine, kind, open way that you are willing to talk about anything. They do it gently. They do they it do. gently. So we are so excited to be sharing this with you. Um, please go check out their podcast. We'll link everything down below. We wanted to share this interview that is featured on their show uh, with all of you, with hopes that you'll check out the rest of their episodes. This is what we call a feed drop, where we are taking one of their episodes and putting it on our feed. Mm-hmm. So it looks like a couple things episode, and we're introing it. But go check out their show. We'll link it down below. They do an awesome job. Without further ado, we bring you Hot Marriage, Cool Parents with Jamie and Doug. And I remember feeling it that day on the shooting. I could not breathe. Yeah. And I was like, I... I had to do everything just to like hang on because your babies it's your babies. Yeah. And I think living in fear, you just got to find out what your word is or what you're saying is in your head to like cut it off because it can, it can consume you. Welcome to a new episode of hot marriage. Cool parents. Welcome. Welcome. I'm your host, Jamie Otis Hainer. And I'm Douglas. Otherwise, otherwise known as Jamie Otis Shainer. Yes. Otis I've, Shainer. I've been called Douglas Otis a couple times through the mail, which is fun. Oh, yeah. People call him Douglas Otis, and I'm like, <laughs> that's really sweet. But then your mom mails me stuff that says Mrs. Douglas Hainer, and I'm like. Yeah. That's oh. my baby boy. Oh, my goodness, your mom. So She's the best. Yeah, she is. And we have exciting news because. Yes, a couple exciting announcements. That's true. Yeah, so if. You had listened to the first episode. Uh, I talked about my struggles with um, addiction and dependency to pain medicine. Then my addiction to um, Suboxone, which is to help you get off of the painkillers. Then transitioning to this new drug called Sublocade, which is an injection in the stomach. And apparently those that are dependent on anything really painkiller related... Um, you take one shot every 26 days and after four months, after the fourth shot, supposedly it helps you get off everything. And I was always scared to get off the medication Suboxone because I knew the withdrawal that was going to happen. Um, I knew that was coming and that was always terrifying and scary. And especially, uh, as I became, uh, a husband and a father, um, having that, I didn't, I didn't want to risk anything, but this is supposed to be some new miracle. Well, a lot of people call it like a miracle drug. Um, Do they really call it a miracle drug? People that have been like really like hardcore, uh, like heroin addicts and things like when you read up the reviews on it, 
a lot of people say, you know, three, four months and it just slowly gets out of your system with barely any withdrawals whatsoever. But anyway, I, I did get my first, my very first shot. Where is the, where is like the applause button? Oh, well, that's, that's not, not it. it. <laughs> oh, there Yay! we go. Oh, total wrong button. Oh, Doug has yeah. uh, this fun, like, if you see us on yeah, YouTube, uh, if you see, <laughs> we are sharing these episodes on YouTube simultaneously. So yes. this episode releases on Wednesdays via the podcast, but then we're sharing the behind the scenes on YouTube the yes. following day. And I have to thank our lovely friends at Family Made because, uh, which is started really by uh, Andrew East and Sean Johnson, um, but we have this tremendous podcast community now in Family Made, and they sent us some podcast equipment. So not only are we bringing the podcast back, but we're official. Now. Yeah, we, we look like we're pilots. Up. Yeah, we have a receiver. We have, yeah, it's just amazing and can't thank them enough. But uh, yeah, we have fun little buttons that do sound effects. And yeah, and so speaking of Andrew and Sean, they are our very first guests today. And we talk a lot about, obviously, um, Nashville and what happened. I th- I'm sure you've really, heard. Gun violence all over the country, which yeah. is really, really being highlighted I mean, this year it's been horrendous. And I don't know. Highlighted is the right word, well, but it's I mean, just it's, happening well, it's, a lot. Yeah, I'm glad that it's being covered though, because there's such lag. There's such a lax in gun laws, uh, which is really nutty. And um, you know, Florida is just a whole. It's like a whole separate world for guns. Um, Jamie and I never really have owned a gun. I've shot a gun before, but we're not gun people. But if you could imagine sending your kid to school. And getting a phone call saying that there's an active shooter at in the their school, school, what would you do? I mean, other than panic and race, the, like if you don't have a car, you'd be running to that school. Yeah, and so Andrew and Sean, um, they're li- they live in Nashville, and I'm sure you probably heard about the Nashville shooting. And so their child, they like their child goes to school um, where. Well, their children, I should yeah. say, um, like right where the, the active same, shooter was. The same neighborhood. Yeah, they nuts. thought that the shooter was in their kid's school. And so we just kind of go and just chat with them about that. I mean, we talk about a lot of different things. They're honestly very, very inspiring and just real humble and just kind of like salt of the earth good people. Yeah, I really hit it off with uh, Andrew when I first talked to him. Uh, he's a really good dude. Yeah, we've had him on our podcast before. I think we've been on theirs a couple times and we've always just had, I don't know, we've just always had a bit of a connection and it's really cool now to be part of their family because their family as in family made, which mm-hmm. is, it's just really so, so nice because, you know, we moved from Sarasota or I'm sorry, we moved from New Jersey to Sarasota. So we don't have family. We don't have friends. We don't really know anybody around here. And, uh, honestly, I really am thankful for Instagram and my community there. Um, and I'm also thankful my daughter's in kindergarten and I was the kindergarten mom because I've yeah. become friends with you you were know, the class mom. Yeah, I was the class mom. And, you know, at, at the moment that we're recording this, Henley Grace is all done with kindergarten. It's so crazy because I came home and I saw a box on the counter. And when I looked in the box, it was a graduation cap and gown and sash and everything. I was, it really just put it, put it into perspective, like Mm -hmm. how fast this is going. Yeah. She's already going to be in first grade soon. I can't believe I have a daughter who's in first grade. Like I couldn't believe we had a kid who was, who was in kindergarten, but like first grade just sounds so much bigger. Yeah. First grade. Nuts. Whoa. Yeah. We haven't had we haven't had to put her on a bus yet. Yeah. So well, that, there's really not that. Um Yeah, but we don't she doesn't ride a bus, but she does she loves going like for field trips and yeah, stuff. Loves school, and then Hendrix which we're so happy about. Yeah. Hendrix, um he is not in pre K, but he's mm. in he's in a glorified daycare we call it school. Yeah. And he's he, doing so good too. He learns a lot there though. Yeah, oh my gosh, he's like I wouldn't say bilingual, that's yeah. probably pushing it, but he learns a lot of Spanish. But I think like the biggest takeaway that um, I want to say to you, Doug, is that I'm just so proud of you for getting that injection. I feel like you should show people on YouTube what it looks like because he's got this little round. um, I'll I'll share like a a video of it because it's not there, but it's like um, 
so and and just to go back to my visit with the doctor and um thankfully i was able to video the whole thing too just i wanted to really kind of mark different milestones so obviously the first shot um and what i found out was it's actually a liquid uh, or a gel type liquid so it comes in a syringe and once it gets delivered it has to be refrigerated yeah, like so it we can't go overnight or I mean, they yeah. have to overnight it, but it has to immediately go in the refrigerator. So I lay down. It's a shot in the stomach. He grabs uh, he grabs my stomach as I'm laying there, uh, puts the needle in. That doesn't hurt. But then as he starts and if you've tried to push gel, I don't know if anybody has tried to push gel through a syringe like that would be a weird thing to do. Um, but it was and he's a pretty jacked doctor and oh is he yeah and and he was pushing and like i could tell you know like when your muscles start to shake when you're trying did like it really hurt hard. doug it was it hurt more than any shot that i've ever gotten in my life well yeah because i saw the bump yeah. and i guess you don't want to show right now but i saw the bump and yeah, the bump's gone down a little bit but they said that because it's a gel it creates this little sack in your stomach and it slowly releases the medication that that you need that stops the withdrawals. It blocks those receptors in your brain that gets that sort of satisfaction from it. And it slowly drips out. My next shot is in a couple of weeks and uh, supposedly it's not going to hurt as much, but I think the, the dose goes down each time. So what is the plan? Like, what well, I mean, what do we expect now that you just got this shot? So like what do so, you, the hardest thing, uh, the hardest thing now is getting out of the habit of taking the Suboxone because that was always a uh, wake up in the morning, um, have either water or juice, have coffee, breakfast, drop the kids off at school. And then on my way home, I would um, take and it's a sublingual film that you put under your tongue. And that's when I would take it. And then as soon as five o'clock hits, like I know mentally in my brain, that's when I take my second dose. Uh, which lasts for the rest of the day until the next morning. And that's been a habit of mine for, you know, longer than we've years. been married. Like, yeah. Crazy. So, you know, that's, that sort of oral fixation or habit is, is probably going to be tough, but so far so good. Um, you know, I don't feel any different. I don't feel anything. I don't feel uh, like how, how, how I would normally feel not taking Suboxone. Are you scared at all of like, I don't know, the withdrawals or it maybe some sort of side effect. Like, what are the side effects? I mean, you just put a ton of medication in your belly and there's yeah. no taking it out unless you cut I, yourself. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's any, like any other drug, or, uh, nausea, um, diarrhea, uh, rash, uh, itchy place where, <laughs> where they uh, put the shot in, but, like, not really any other side effects. Are you at all scared that when you come off Suboxone, that you might be interested in, like, pain pills again? No. Um, and I, I said this to the doctor, because he's more of an addiction specialist, um, when I when I said, it, like, you know, if if you know any addict, if you know that anybody that's going through there, um, there is a rock-bottom point. And sometimes that rock-bottom point isn't enough. An addict is not going to quit unless they are mentally ready to quit unless they say in their head this is not worth it there are better things to do this path is going to lead to death or worse uh well i don't know what's worse than death but um there's nothing good that comes out of it and you can go to any number of aa meetings you can go to detox you can go to group settings nobody gets sober until they are mentally ready to, or mentally decide to. What do you think made you mentally ready? It, it was, I knew the damage it was doing to me and then to the people around me. Um, if you know an addict, they never have money. They go broke. Um, and it was my day, and, and this is kind of what also prompted to get off the box on and supplicate uh, and take the injection because your day surrounds and is scheduled around when when and where you can find your drug. And until that happens, the day can't start. 
or the day can't end until that happens and it doesn't matter what time of day or anything. It's that whole entire day is your search. Um, once I, once we started to go away on the RV trip, if I don't take the Suboxone, I would go into withdrawal. Once I got to the end of the month or once I was, you know, the subscri- or the prescription was going down, I would have to, I would get that same anxiety. Like, am I going to find it or am I going, going to get that medication from a pharmacy? Um, and that panic is miserable. Yeah. And would I go back to it uh, or would I even think of taking pain medication? No, I, I've, I've, I've gone so long, I'm so proud of how long I've been able to. And, and at some point, like my mentally, I'm just, I'm, I know that path is going to lead to death and everything else. Yeah. What about if you, cause I remember one time when we were newly, like I wouldn't say newlyweds, but I guess now that we've been married for almost 10 years, I guess it was kind of <laughs> like newlyweds. We yeah. are like a year in and you cut yourself on a box cutter. I'll never forget this because I was three levels up. You were in the garage, and I was on the third yeah. level of our townhouse. <laughs> and I heard your scream, and I knew you were hurt. Yeah. And you had a box cutter, and you were, like, slicing the boxes open. And you must have had your Doctor said it there. was the worst cut they've ever seen. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you screamed, and I had Vicodin I from- yelled. You screamed so bad that I heard you three levels up and I was, and I, my sister was there and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, what happened to him? Like, I was really you, scared for you. You did know right away. Oh, I ran st- down those, all those flights of stairs and yeah, I was like, you are did. you okay? And then it was like this measly little cut on your, but it actually wasn't Still just measly. Stitches. Yeah, yeah, it was, it did need stitches, but I was like, gosh, I thought like, I don't know what, I mean, you, that was a quite the scream, but I, got, yeah. I can imagine when you're slicing through boxes and you just slice through your knee that probably yeah. hurts a little bit but I, m- I remember I was like oh I have Vicodin from like um, a tooth pain that I had had and you wouldn't take it and I was like I didn't yeah, you didn't no. tell me that you were on Suboxone that is another day for another episode of how I found out right but I also told you that I had an issue with pain medication you never you honestly never shared. I had no idea the depths of it. Like I yeah. had no idea. And the truth of the matter is, yeah, no, is for when we were married at first sight, I had two deal breakers. I didn't want someone who was in debt because, or like that was like going to just, I, I just was, I've, I mean, I grew up so poor and I worked so hard for every little you know, thing that I had. And I just didn't want to deal with someone that was, you know, flashy and in debt and all of that. And then I did not want to have someone who was uh, like addicted to drugs or into drugs or, you know, I just done addiction is, it runs in my family, my, you know, my mom, and honestly, even just sitting here. And we'll always have to worry about our kids with that. I mean, yeah, you know, my dad was addicted, my mom addicted you, you know, Mm. Yeah. I mean, People yeah, that's really scary. Side. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember you would not take that pill when you got, when you got, when you cut yourself, you would yeah, not no. take that. And I guess it's because you can't take it when you're on Suboxone cause you could die. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything. Um, yeah. But I've read that you, isn't it true that like if you, if you're taking Suboxone, you, it, you, so and you start taking opioids or alcohol, you can die. No. That's not um, true. I mean, it, anything ex, uh, in excess is, um, you know, has that warning to it. But the way that the medication worked is it would block your receptors that would normally. So if you were to take pain medication, that sort of euphoria and endorphins or whatever happens, they they latch on to certain receptors in your brain. Uh, and then slowly they start to peel off as the drug wears off. And then that's when you go back to normal and then kind of worse than you were before. With Suboxone, it stays on those receptors and blocks anything from attaching to it. So what happens if you had to have surgery? Well, so I've had to go through that. I, when I tore my Achilles tendon. While you were on Suboxone? Um, no, just while I had uh, addiction issues um, and I had stopped. Um once I um, had my Achilles tendon tear, I mean, that was pretty horrible, but um, I went through everything without painkillers. Um, but That's yeah, wild. so what the but issue. I birthed the baby without painkillers. That's so, true. It so, couldn't be yeah. worse than that. Um, 
but the um yeah if if you so if you were to take painkillers after you take suboxone nothing really happens if you were to take painkillers or anything like that and then take suboxone too soon after that that's when you go into immediate withdrawals and that's when you can have seizures and it's just yeah bad news wow well you know just sitting here talking to you about like what you've experienced well first of all what I was saying about the two things was that a my two deal breakers for married at first sight was I didn't want someone in debt and I really didn't want someone who was addicted to anything drugs for sure and turns out the person that these matchmakers put me with was ding, in ding, ding. massive debt. Mm. Well, not massive, no. but debt, a lot did of debt, debt yeah. and had an addiction problem that I did not know about. Yeah, which I was forthcoming about with uh, Dr. Salona when we did the whole interview process. I guess he just didn't remember my deal breakers, <laughs> but uh turns out that I think God just wanted us together yeah. and we're meant to be together. Yeah, I mean, at that point, I had been clean for a while, so. But yeah, I, but still, I, I was, like, really adamant. I didn't want anybody who ever, I just didn't want to go through that because I was going through it with my mother. Yeah, and no, I hear you. I just didn't want, like, it's like a trigger for me in so many ways, and I just didn't want to have to, to deal with that, and so it was just very, very shocking <laughs> for me, I'm, uh, you know, but, I mean, I'm also thankful of course that it happened because i love you so much I love so, you. you know it all worked mm. out <laughs> but um yeah so i'm well i'm excited for you doug and i'm so proud of you i, I really yell. am i'm gonna definitely keep uh, uh not necessarily a journal but i do want to kind of keep what the effects are over time and you know, how this, how this actually works, um, which I'm excited for. Yeah. I mean, honestly, when you're talking about how your whole day revolves around your next fix, it reminds me of my mom. Yeah. Like it, I, I like, I, and then, you know, when you try to put yourself in someone else's shoes, I mean, it's so easy to just get so frustrated with that person when they seem so selfish and they're blowing through money, they're stealing, they're lying, mm -hmm. they're cheating. Yeah. I mean, I had that with, and I still, in some level, like have that with my mom. But then when you try to put yourself in their shoes and they're just, it's it's a disease. And yeah. they're so addicted. And, you know, they're not, I mean, I remember when my mom, when it I was takes younger. takes over your life. Yeah, yeah. My mom was like, I mean, I remember even just today, oddly, I was thinking about how, you know, I'm, I guess I'm thinking because Henley's going to start summer camp. And so I'm like thinking about I, I got to go to one summer camp and my mom had to drive a long ways to take me there and that's like a big thing I mean I, I was very poor so like that was a big deal for me but the fact that my mom actually drove me there yeah I mean that's really nice she didn't have to do that there are some parents that never do that and so I don't know I just feel it makes me hurt for my mom um Oh, golly, I feel like I'm going to cry. But it just makes me hurt for my mom because I know that before she was addicted, um, you know, she was, like, such a great person. And I'm sure she still is a great person. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man, it's yeah. like. It's but a then, disease. And yeah. it's so hard, though, because, I mean, we have to have boundaries. Like, I, ha I can't just, like, let my mom in when she acts like this. But it's so hard because the one thing she wants is to be let in and loved. And that's why she's. It's just a vicious, terrible cycle. Yeah. It really is. And so, needless to say, I think that if you know anyone who has struggled with addiction, you know, I don't know, like, be be gentle on them because it's a disease and it's so easy to judge when you're not living in their shoes. But these people are just, you know, like all the rest of us, they're hurt and they're looking for escape. love and an escape. Yeah. So, ooh. I got deep, yeah. <laughs> but I'm so, I'm genuinely Doug, like so proud of you. And I feel like, I don't know. Well, I appreciate it. I really do. Yeah. And you've been supportive and not pushy or, you know, annoyed with it. Like I really, really appreciate you. Oh, well, I love you. Love you too. Well, without us getting too mushy gushy, I think we should bring our guests on. I'm yes. so excited to have Sean and Andrew on the podcast, the can't East wait. Fam. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, this is a perfect way to, you know, even though this is ep ep even though this is after our kind of comeback, um, I feel this is a perfect first guest for us during this comeback. Yeah. 
I think so too. I mean, they welcomed us into their family made family yes, and which we're going to be able to talk more about now. Yes. And I can't wait. Yay. And let's get Sean and Andrew on. Let's do it. And before we go any further, we always like to give a shout out to our five star reviewer. And we haven't been on here in a while, so this is going to be an older review. But it, I mean, we love, love, love getting your five star reviews because it shows us that like you really care about these podcasts. And so, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedules to leave us a five star review. Yes, and this week comes from Journey Seven One Seven. I just wanted to thank Doug and Jamie for bringing on Lisa Billu onto the podcast. Listening to her story and her advice on courage and setting boundaries for oneself was a life changer. I was recently in an unhealthy relationship and when I heard the podcast, I knew that it was time to take control of my life and end things for good. I even re-listened to the podcast on my way to break up with him and it helped me. Thank you for all your help. Honestly, that, that is the best. Yeah, that is why we are here and we brought this podcast back and we are committed to continue to bring just really great guests on who are inspiring, encouraging, who are going to help you live your best life because we all need that type of community, that type of encouragement in our life. For sure. Yes. But uh, anyway. We are so pumped and so thrilled to say that Sean Johnson East, former, former Olympian, she's a mom of two and just a all around badass girl and her hubby, Andrew East, who's a former NFL player, dad of two and such an incredible businessman, I gotta say. Like, Shout out didn't to the long know that snappers. about the East That's family, right. but they are. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, like more than all these amazing accolades that you guys have, you're just such good, down to earth, like humble, great people, like good friends and just good people to know. And I feel like Doug and you know Doug and Andrew have a, a little like man bromance type thing going I'm, on. I'm secure enough to say that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I feel I guys, I'm, I'm so excited. One, that the podcast is back. Two, to be talking with you all again. I am a little disappointed this isn't in person though, because yes. that would have yeah. been way more. But that time is coming, I'm sure. Yes, it, it, it will. And just one more thing on the Olympic thing. Um, is it similar to the military where once an Olympian, always an Olympian? So is it weird to say former Olympian? Did I say former I Olympian? You I should say, did I say former? Yeah. That is a shame. Once an Olympian, no, 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 no. always Olympian. <laughs> Absolutely. Honestly, I don't even know. Because I said like former Olympian or like ex-Olympian or like. Well, you're definitely not an ex or a former. I don't know why I said that. And you're so humble. That proves my point, how humble you are to say, oh, I don't even know. No, I'm like, I'm a nurse, but I haven't been in the hospital working as a nurse for many years now. And I'm still like, once a nurse, always a nurse. I'm a nurse. <laughs> so an Olympian who wins medals, I think it's fair to say, definitely not former. So. But yeah, <laughs> okay, this, my apologies on that. This is, <laughs> this is going to be episode 140. Yeah. Which is bonkers. And the coolest thing about this episode, and like honestly the biggest reason that we're pumped to have you as our very first guest now that we're back on the pod, is that we really wanted to partner with uh, just a good company. It's really hard to do podcasting, and people don't realize the behind the scenes of podcasts. It seems like, oh, you just like, you know, talking to a microphone and throw it out there. And that is a bit of it, but there's also a lot of behind the scenes and it's a very, very time consuming. And so we wanted to partner with people that, or like a company that we could trust that could kind of like offload some of the, the difficulty of it. And, you know, Andrew and Doug were talking and at the time we weren't even thinking of bringing it back because we had a whole lot going on. We were traveling across country and <laughs> whatnot. And the more and more we started like kind of following you guys and just learning more about who you are and what you do. And then about this incredibly com incredible company that you made called Family Made, which we're going to dig into in a second. We were like, you know, maybe we should like talk to them about this. Like this actually, these, these guys seem awesome. And this company seems to align with our values. And so speaking of that, right off the top, you know, welcome and thank you for being on our podcast. And thank you for inviting us to be a part of your amazing company called Family Made. And uh, I just want to go right from the top. I want to be like, I just ask you to share because now we're a part of it. And that's, you know, we're sharing that with our audience. And I wanted to have like speak from the horse's mouth, like exactly what Family Made is all about. Or the heart. Yeah. Or the heart. Have, you know, horse's no. mouth or heart. Like horse's horse's mouth. Mouth. I like You're horse's up. mouth, <laughs> which is me. Um, <laughs> we, oh my gosh. We love what we do. We love creating content. And through creating content, we found this amazing community out there. 
of people like you guys, of families all over the world who are looking for like truly a community of people to relate to and to talk to and kind of journey through the ups and downs of life with. And we ended up creating this network and this company because we wanted to find, like go out there and find all of these families that are also creating content and just help uplift that, like their stories and share it with the world. We think families are pretty cool. We think they're very unifying and not polarizing and not controversial and just good valued and good. I think family to us is our favorite thing in the entire world. And being able to share other people's stories is really, I don't know what we love to do. And we're so excited to have you guys. We're so excited to share your story more and help get your story out there. Um, yeah. I don't know. We've been on uh, YouTube for, we're coming up on eight years. Yeah. Can you believe that? No. And wow. we really did realize, um, one, it's like a responsibility. Two, it's such a privilege. And three, there is, um, like, I don't know. I feel like we're making an impact with some of the content, some of the videos we make. And 100%. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, we, we realized that in this niche of family life, which you guys fall under, things can get so hectic. You got kids, you got the travel and there's like a million different moving pieces. And a lot of times there can be an obstacle to like maybe putting out videos that could be life-changing. And, mm -hmm. and so we were like, what if we were able to uh, leverage our team and help people who might have certain barriers? And like, first of all, I want to hear about the past couple months for you guys. Cause my gosh, it sounds <laughs> so exciting, but uh, it's like, how can we help more of this content uh, overtake the internet. Cause mm -hmm. I, I feel like, uh, you know, social media has a lot of good to it and it has a lot of bad to it, but, uh, a lot of people tap into like, you know, the, the polarizing issues that get a lot of views and, and, um, and definitely like people are interested in it, but it's also divisive. And if you look at society, I feel like the one thing that everyone can empathize with and sympathize with is like family. It's like, oh man, my sibling is like this, or my parents raised me like this. And if, if we're able to tap into a little bit of that aspect and unify people through that, then, um, then I feel like that'd be a worthy cause. So if we're, we're aiming to share a lot of different family experiences and Sean and I have one and Sean's background is really unique and people are interested in it, but also your guys' story, uh, I think is phenomenal. You guys have learned so much. And so I personally am very excited that your show is back. Um, we love po it's podcasting is the favorite thing that we do. We get to connect with people like you over it. And so uh, I hope you experience that as well, but we're just pumped. Yeah. pumped. Yeah. Okay, I have one really dumb analogy and Andrew loves analogies. So he might. I'm so excited funny. for this. Do you know the movie inception? Yes. I if we can do that to the entire world and families, <laughs> oh, like our world would be a better place. Uh, yeah, Wait, like, so explain the movie. Different levels. Are, like, explain, explain the movie to those of us who don't movie. know what Inception is. Like, it's I, like yeah. it's self if we can, you know how the algorithms on all platforms are kind of serving up marketed and like intended content. They're trying to get you to buy something or buy into something. If we can like subliminally yes. be like, families are really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do it over and over and over again. Plant this yeah. ideas is and part of life. Yeah, this is better than like building a business or yeah. becoming a millionaire or and anything maybe else. It's a like lot of the evil in the world will go away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, any parent can relate to the craziness and and hectic lifestyle, and you create this own little bubble for yourself. And I know when we were getting ready to have Henley, I mean, there was nobody knows what to do. And there's so many different opinions out there. And at the end of the day, it just comes to, well, you know, your story is going to be unique. And what I found with our fans was people have seen us since we've known each other and they've watched us this whole way. And I can't tell you the community of people that have continued to follow us that we've looked out to for advice, parenting advice, friendship advice, marriage advice, that was the connection to family made media for me was this is going to organize all of the best material 
and whether it's new parents or teenagers or uh, marital struggles and you know all of that is just balled into one and it's an exciting opportunity and I can't wait to to promote more of family made it's yeah. amazing wow. yeah no truly because it's true so I come from a family, speaking of families, where I never... You never told me that. (laughs) I come from a family. (laughs) On the topic of families, I have a family. (laughs) Uh, But no, I don't don't have... I think we all, now that I'm older, I'm like, none of us have like traditional families. And maybe I guess some do somewhere, but a lot of us have something. We all have something. And I never knew my dad. And my mom, unfortunately, still struggles with addiction. And so you know, when you're talking about family and wholesome and, you know, you want that there, sometimes that, that kind of triggers me to be like, Ooh, I don't have that, you know, because I come from a different type of family than what we consider wholesome per se. However, I think that what I've learned through life and, and actually inevitably sharing my life, you know, on television through, you know, marrying my husband and whatnot is that there are so many more people than I realize that come from a family that isn't like that. And so the cool thing about family made is that, and what I really love about you guys is that you're so welcoming to everyone, to absolutely everyone, uh, based on what what my research, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, (laughs) but you're very welcoming to everyone. I mean, there are people within this community family made. So uh, for those of you guys listening, you can check it out. I mean, literally everywhere. Uh, It's like they have a website, uh, familymade.com and they have, you know, they're, they have um, YouTube channel and all the things. But needless to say, no matter what family you come from, you can find your people within this tribe. And I feel like you, ha- you guys have done a really great job of welcoming just everyone, anyone you know who kind of shares the same values. And so not to continue talking about families and whatnot, but um, <laughs> yeah, we're just super pumped to be a part of it and to share our family and you know where we come from and be a part of you guys' community. And I'm really excited that you're going to share that you guys are now pregnant with baby number three. Oh, oh, you you're wild, man. Uh, oh, you're wild, dude. Oh. Give, give us a few more months. Give us a few more months. Gotcha. Okay, uh, that was uh, just a rumor. Okay, I was. <laughs> I tried. I mean, this would actively be, working, guys. This would be Those a great, great, great comeback horse, episode. Seriously? <laughs> oh no, well, no, we're trying too. Yeah. Um, oh, we're not pregnant. I wish we okay. were. No, we're, we're in the trying no, boat right as well. Right now, we're trying to get Henley out of the bed. We're not trying for a baby. We're That's trying to get Henley out of our bed. Yeah. So speaking Dang. of trying, we've seen there's been a lot of, uh, you know, you guys have shared a little bit, like whether you should try, whether you don't want to try for baby number three. Where are you guys at with that for those of those everyone, everyone who's listening who doesn't know where you guys are at? You have two beautiful children already, and they, I know we have two kids too. They keep your hands full. So where are you guys at with number three? Taking care of your health isn't always easy. But it should at least be simple. And that's why for the last four years, we've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions, home or away. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel ready to take on the day. And that's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. We personally trust this brand because they have the research to back their products. And I know, I'm getting essential brain, gut, and immune health support with vitamins, probiotics, and nutrients from Whole Foods, which is really Mm. important. AG1 really is something Sean and I implement into our daily routine. It's not just something we do once in a while when we feel like it. We really try to stay on top of it. Yes, and I like to think of it as a nutritional insurance. I know I'm covering my nutritional bases right from the start of the day. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1, and that's why I've partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com forward slash couple things. That's drinkag1.com forward slash couple things. Check it out. We have a three and a half year old and a one and a half year old. And I feel like we're just, just coming up for air <laughs> with our second. We're like, we might have a sense of understanding and being able to figure like handle it. Maybe one, one day a week. We feel like that. So yeah, we're down. We're like, might as well. I feel like I have one more in me. Um, 
She's going to have twins though. So nope. you got two more coming. Through. I am not. <laughs> I would like to not put that in the universe. <laughs> um, I had two 10 pound babies. So I would not wow. like to have two 10 pound babies at yeah. the same time. That'd be wild. Yeah. That would be wild. I don't know if that's ever happened yeah, before. Yeah. That's a but, lot of pushing. Yeah. We are, <laughs> we are on the number three train. So. Oh, that's so exciting. Well, good luck to you guys. That's yeah. that's super duper exciting. And it also can be an emotional roller coaster. And speaking of that, you know, I know that for your first your first pregnancy together, you it ended in miscarriage. We had you guys on and we talked about it before. But, you know, just to touch on that a little bit, because I feel I feel like trying to conceive after suffering from a loss, it's like it's, it's just a whole different ball game. And so how do you stay positive, like while you're trying to conceive knowing that that's a very real circumstance and like how did you stay positive with your you know your two babies now while you were pregnant with them um the first one was the hardest uh like the first like the miscarriage the very first pregnancy was the hardest because we didn't have any understanding of anything I feel like what we learned in like seventh grade biology is (laughs) the only thing we knew and so I didn't understand that miscarriages were common and I still believed that like creating a baby was like out of a movie. It's supposed to be the the most romantic thing in the entire world and just be like, Oh wow, this is perfect. Um, Now two babies later, we (laughs) fully understand that conceiving is very hard and it can be frustrating and not romantic and it's very strategic and uh, it just kind of takes the, the fun out of it sometimes, but I don't know if you guys have had those moments where you're like, all right, we're on the clock. Yep, the let's, app says X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Like, Today's the day. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> oh, I mean, we, yeah. there were some I, – I just remember afterwards, I would lay on my stomach. Jamie would prop her butt on my back and put her legs all the way up just in the Just to try air. to help that, you know, help yeah. make it happen. Gravity. <laughs> Gravity, I, I guess. It was, yeah, I mean – I would have loved to see a picture of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can I, just avoid it. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> no yeah, mental yeah, yeah. I remember that with Drew, our first kid. I was like, am I supposed to like do a handstand now for the next 20 minutes? Like, what do we do? Yeah. How do you, this is very, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I will say though. For, for those who haven't been through this, though, I'm sure people are like, wait, what, what? is happening? What are you talking about? Yeah. 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 Doesn't win? everybody what? do that? After? I don't know if it's a, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's an old wives tale or whatever, but if if you can picture me naked and Jamie naked. Okay. You're, you're really going there. You're really going yeah. there. I, is it like an old wives tale that uh you know, afterwards, if you kind of stay upside down that it's Well, I don't more think it's an old wives tale. I think it's chance? scientific. Like, you know, we're oh. helping those helping the little guy swim. Help him travel. <laughs> yes, that's it. Uh, uh, and so, you know, just speaking on kids and you guys are from Nashville and obviously, you know, our hearts genuinely go out to you and your community. And, I, you know, I saw your post that your children go to school near where this Nashville shooting happened. And I can't even fathom what your community is going through. And even you knowing that, you know, you're children's school is just a couple blocks away heartbreaking you know and this is such a wild world that we're living in that I even want to ask you like how do you navigate a getting your kid like what was that day like for you and how did you navigate getting your children and and also if someone god forbid goes through this like what kind of tips do you have for them and you know and what kind of ways I have so many questions I'll load them I'll I'll load them all out there and then I want to just give you the floor to talk because whatever you guys are comfortable with though obviously you know I want to be sensitive to the people in in Nashville um you know but it is uh it is something that you guys had to go through and it's the scariest thing in Ever. And quite frankly, I feel like every parent everywhere is wanting to know, okay, so this is happening. It's happening to, in our neighborhoods. Like, what can we do for our children? And so, um, how, whatever you're comfortable sharing, like what that day was like, and then kind of also after that, what what your plan is in place now going forward, and how can you kind of help us, other parents who haven't been through that, prepare ourselves for God forbid, for the worst, because we always think, oh, that'll never happen to us. Oh, that's never going to be in our neighborhood. And then all of a sudden it, it does. And so how can we best prepare ourselves? Well, I feel like this is an appropriate transition 
uh, after talking about like trying to conceive. And I, I feel like, you know, when you're trying to get pregnant, it is, it's this process of coming to terms with understanding that, man, I have so little control over this and it's very humbling. Right. And I feel like that carries over to parenting as well. And, and even this situation where it's like, man, I feel like I have so little control over this. And, and as parents, like in relation to the kids, it's like, Oh, like, what do you do when you're not sure where to navigate or you feel lost or hopeless? It's like, what do you do? Um, because it, it is scary. And as we sit here now, I mean, we're again, not trying to, I wish we could tell you how near we are, but it's like, it's, it's in our neighborhood, right. Um, where this all happened. And, uh, I got a call from Sean immediately after the event happened and said, Hey, there's a school shooter at the kid's school. Um, they're both kind of the same type of school in the same area. And so we heard the news and she's, I've, I've never heard a cry like this. She's in absolute tears, a wreck. I was nearby. And so I was able to jump in the car and go within like five minutes with this. I've yeah, the, the feelings of like, I am going to hold my child in my arms, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the context is. It's like, I mean, I, you feel this as a, as a parent, it's just like innate in you where it's, I, I need to be with them. If there's anything new or tried, like I have to have to see them and I have to be with them. So I was like going to school, I was ready to just run through the doors no matter what. But um, I also didn't know what the situation was because Sean, I, I could barely understand her with how much she was crying. And so I show up there and there's parents literally on the floor crying on their knees. Like there's cops with their hands in the air is like crying. And it was like this, like post-apocalyptic while I'm just people driving on the opposite sides of the road and running across the street. And it was like a complete panic situation. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, as you can imagine too, within the city of Nashville and within our community, um, things, Nashville is such a small world. Like we're all so close. We know the officer. We don't know those officers um, personally, but like, my best friend, one of them was her uncle who was actually on site. So a lot of the information was unra unraveling a lot faster for us than it was within the news. Yeah. And it was unraveling without all the details. So the first calls we were receiving was there is an active shooter at a church school at a church school. And it just so happened to be the same type of church school that our kids go to in the same neighborhood. And the details of like the specifics weren't being released yet because things were coming out so fast. Oh my God. And it wasn't until Andrew got to our kids school that he fit, he found out it was not their school specifically. And it was just the wildest roller coaster of emotions because at the time when I got the call, it was our babies. It like in that helplessness I felt as a parent is something I can't ever unfeel. It's just like, I, there's no way we can drive fast enough. There's no way we can get there. There's nothing I can do. And I remember standing in our driveway, seeing the helicopters and hearing the sire, like it was right there. And it just like hit me. And when Andrew confirmed that it wasn't our kid's school, the rush of emotion of relief, but still just sheer sadness. Mm -hmm. I was standing at the edge of a dri our driveway watching parents do anything they desperately could to get to like, to get to the school, flying hundreds of miles an hour down the road, laying on their horns. And it just crushed me mm -hmm. because for, an, for a small second, I was that parent. But then when I knew I wasn't, I was guilty, but I was in straight fear and horror for those babies that were at that school and those parents just trying to get there and getting text messages from all of our friends, just waiting to hear, is the shooter down? Like, did they, did they get them? Are the babies okay? And hearing one after another, like, so-and-so is not accounted for and so-and-so uh, it just, it was the most horrifying day. Yeah. Like, I mean, 
in retrospect, all the information kind of like you could see the picture of what happens. But when you get a, a call saying, hey, there's an active shooter, like a stone's throw away from your house that you live in and in the neighborhood of your kid's school, you're like, one, what do I do? But then you start hearing like, okay, there's 20 people in the hospital and you just don't know like how large is the situation? What's going to happen next? Like, are there are there more people out there? Like, was this a group trying to act? And so it was wild. Like everybody in the, in the neighborhood, it was like kind of evacuated because again, you're, you don't know if this person is loose and you're not getting, you're not there alive seeing yeah. the things. And but, yeah. our kids' school was still on lockdown. So getting hold of our babies was difficult. And asking the question of like, what do you do? We don't know. And I think that was one of the harder things for us to digest is like, like everybody in the world, our immediate reaction was like, we have to fix this. Yeah. But that's also the most helpless feeling in the world because you can't, you can't fix it overnight. I don't know if we can fix it within our generation. And yeah, we could show up on our Senator's door and demand change, but it's not going to change. And it's just like, it's, it's such a helpless feeling. And I think the only retrospective thought I have of like looking at how I dealt with the whole thing. I went into sheer shock when I got the call and was incapable of making sense of anything. Mm -hmm. And I think as hard as it is, if you are ever faced in that situation, take a breath and figure out as much as you can before. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's possible. I don't even know if there's a logical sequence of things that you need to do, but I, as as we move forward, I, my thoughts on it are like can't let evil pre- prevail, right? Yeah. It's there's there's so much good and so much benefit from these kids being together with these teachers who are pouring into them and investing in them. We've been blessed as parents from them being in these schools, and it's like we got so many responses saying like, "I'm never going to send my kid to school," mm-hmm. and this is why, like. But it's like, all right, one, let's have the conversations and like the dialogue of how can we have this never happen again, but also um, take the tangible steps to make sure that we can still tap into the good and like the the good far outweighs the, the bad and we need to preserve that. So yeah. I don't know what the process looks like, but I, I, I feel strongly about that. So yeah. that's my, I guess that's my next question because you were so close, like this was so close to home for you. And so have you guys, if you're not comfortable answering, of course, you know, just let us know, but have you guys re have, has school started again for your children? Are they still home? We could, we took them to school, uh, two days after. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a really hard decision. And one that I think it was a decision we kind of made numb. Mm-hmm. We tried not to overthink it. Yeah. Um, but our kids' school is very small. We know, every single person that works there we know all the kids and it was more of a community decision within our school they we talked to the heads of the school multiple times they were so i don't know transparent with their protocols and their safety and what they were going to do extra on top and and honestly for us in that moment our kids could feel the weight of the yeah. city and they could feel the weight of that day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, both of us were bawling around them and just saying, we're so happy to your home and hearing sirens and just feeling that weight. We felt like it was good for them to have like the structure and normalcy of their original, you know, their normal lives prior to this event and yeah. being back with their friends. And I feel like if we kept changing things for them day by day and feeling that weight any even more within our household would have <clears throat> been harder for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know. If, I mean, it's, it's unthinkable and something I don't think that you really can prepare for um, something like that. Um, and I can't imagine having to have the conversation with a child about what had happened. And um, you know, it's, I don't even know if it's the education part, but the, one of the scariest um, things that I had to come over when, you know, just having kids is that you drop them off and you're out of control. You know, it's, you, you, and 
you don't think about it. It's almost routine now where you drop them off at school or you drop them off at the sitter or preschool daycare. And every once in a while, the thought comes into me how scary that is because I'm, I'm not there. But one thing I wanted to... I don't know if it's anxiety or just something that's instinct, but it is a scary thought to not have control. That's a, that's a tension that, that, uh, I mean, it's, it's all throughout parenting, though, right? Where it's like, you have these parents who don't let their kids, you know, do any activities because they might get hurt. Right? right. And it's like, obviously there's, there's layers to it. And as we sent our kids back to school, it was with the understanding that the school was doubling down on security measures and yeah. they had done all the right things. So it's like, we're not being reckless and like going over the line, but like you have to fight this tension of like, Hey, what's safe versus what's being overprotective. Like they need to, like, you can't just keep them held in your arms under an umbrella the whole time. It's so tough. Well, and I think that goes, that feeds into the story of Covenant, the school that was targeted. You could go down that rabbit hole of, oh, they didn't have bulletproof glass or, oh, they didn't have enough security cards or whatever it is, or, oh, I shouldn't have sent my kid to that school or whatever it was. But at the end of the day, Covenant did nothing wrong. No. Like they had every protocol they needed. They, the teachers acted like no parent did a wrongdoing there. It right. was a horrific tragedy that happened because of someone's like one person's decision. And I think for us deciding to send our kids back to school, it's like, we have trust in our school. We have trust in our teachers. And as a parent, that's, what you have to fall back on and just speak like to that point I think that you have done a remarkable job of not living in fear being that you're in this city where this has happened and um oh my gosh I don't know why I feel like I'm gonna get emotional it's just can't imagine I mean it's just such a um it's just a really inspiring way that you have handled this because you're clearly clueless I mean how could anybody have the answers to this but you aren't like, you know, and, and I think what any parent would want to do, I don't know, I just think of my own children in this situation and it's making me a little emotional because I think what I would want to do is hug them and like how you were saying, Andrew, like wrap them up in, in a bubble and never let them out again. But that would be then doing a disservice for your children. And so you have to stand in strength and you have to show your children that they're safe and, and believe that in your heart. And so the way that you have taken this tragedy that has happened and has affected everybody in America, everybody worldwide, and you're not living in fear. I mean, how are you, like, can you share with us, like, how are you able to garner that strength? And also, Sean, you and I were talking just briefly before about, you know, you've clearly been in the public eye for a very, very long time being a former Olympian. (laughs) No, just just kidding. Um, But, you know, an Olympian. And Uh, yeah, listen, I can't say I'm a former Olympian, whether it's former or not. Listen, the title's there. But um, no, but um, you've been in the public eye and you've had issues yourself with um, not not obviously not a, a school mm-hmm. shooting, but just issues with your own safety. And it comes all down to the same thing. Like we want our children to stay safe. And you were explaining to me how, I mean, you've obviously, you went on to win medals and you stayed in the public eye and that's that's like you're live you are like living what many people aspire for and that is to not live in fear and it's very easy to live in fear with covid with when you were, we were talking at the top of this of our interview together that you've created family made and it's not about these like you know it's not about triggering likes and all that jazz like you know things that are buzzworthy, but it's easy to get caught up in like the COVID and living in fear because it's out there all over the place, all over, you know, you see whenever it was like, you know, when we were in the pandemic and now the school shootings, it's out there, it's everywhere. And it's so easy to get caught up in living in fear. So to wrap up this interview with you, which I could just chat with you forever, but (laughs) do you have any advice? I mean, you know, clearly no advice on what, how is anyone going to respond? You know, I guess don't try not to go in shock, but that's so much easier said than done. But what advice do you have for absolutely everybody who wants to instantly bubble their child and, you know, like just kind of live in fear, unfortunately, because it's a scary world out there. So what's your advice for that? Um, I could probably talk down this route for an hour. So what you're alluding to, I had 
um, a very bad scare. I had a stalker um, who was very dangerous, who got within arm's length of me with like armed weapons and like everything. Um, This went on for years when I was 15 and 16, went all the way till I was 19 and 20 before he was finally put away. I had to face him in court. I had bodyguards. I dealt with FBI agents, all of these things. Um, He was a NASA scientist, which is wild. Um, But I kind of learned that fear at a very young age, and I saw it within my parents. And I I learned firsthand it can be debilitating. Mm -hmm. And just you would get into, I would get into these spells of where, like, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't trust anybody around me. I had such severe anxiety staying in a hotel room by myself and is that someone breaking into the room like into my room or what just so many things and I think honestly Andrew's the one who kind of taught me how to deal with that better but I am one of those people I go down every hypothetical route like we went to a concert the other night and I was like how do I get out of here if we need to get out of here yeah same and that's just how my brain operates and I look at people different I'm like what's your intention and just whatever but honestly with kids it got to a point where I could just feel the potential of it being crippling to where I wouldn't be able to breathe. There are so many hypothetical situations that you have no control over. Dropping your kid off at school, they sleep over at a friend's house. I mean, letting them play outside without like being uh, holding their hand, having a swimming pool that we have a fence around. Like there's so many things that I can like feel within my chest. If I let myself go, I'm not coming back from Mm -hmm. because it's, it's terrifying. And I think at the end of the day, we are faith-based people. And I just repeat to myself a lot, just like God is good and it's all you can do. And I know that is very, can be cliche, but it's the only thing that stops my, my brain from going down a rabbit hole of, and not coming back. And I remember feeling it that day on the shooting I could not breathe. Yeah. And I was like, I I had to do everything just to like hang on because your babies, it's your babies. Yeah. And I think living in fear, you just got to find out what your word is or what you're saying is in your head to like cut it off because it can, it can consume you. And I, I also think too, I mean, you, you also mentioned it, um, you know, having Andrew, I, you know, there is, there is so much power in family and community and getting together with like-minded people, um, getting together with, you know, what Jamie would call a tribe, you know, where you have, you have an outlet, you have a distraction, you have people that you can bounce ideas off of and ask for advice. And, you know, it, really does take a, a lot to for some people to get out there and put themselves out there and be vulnerable in front of, you know, people or strangers. And I know it was something that, you know, we're still looking for a community down here and a and a tribe. And it's like, you know, I had I hadn't had to make friends since, you know, first grade. Um yeah. one up to Nashville. I was like, come to Nashville. We've got the most amazing tribe for you. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, we're that's definitely right. gonna Definitely going to have to take a trip over there. Yeah. We missed you guys on the RV journey. Yeah. I know. Next time. But um, I mean. I, I, I do want to make clear, though, Jamie, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, one, the last week has presented many opportunities of Sean and I going back to our bedroom, closing and locking the door, turning the lights off, and, like, really just kind of sitting there with each other. And, like, one, just silent, but two, tears, and then kind of processing with each other so it's not like you know yeah we're not just brazenly oh. confronting this yeah. like you have to you have to embrace the reality and like there's so many just foreign emotions that that we're also dealing with but doing it together um i think like when there is a situation of grief which this year's presented too many for us i feel like it people equate it with sadness and like only sadness but i also think there are is an aspect to it that it's really beautiful and it's an opportunity to double down on your community, to like deepen relationships, to to understand yourself better and how you navigate the situations and also understand your spouse or your kids or your siblings. And like that 
there's something about that that's really, really precious and special. And yeah, just, I guess when something like this happens, like with, when adversity hits, you know, as athletes, we know how revealing that can be, uh, how, how strengthening and building that can be and, and refining as well. It's like when you're in a new situation and an uncomfortable situation, a foreign area, it's like, okay, what am I going to like, this is going to tell me something about myself and you can cower away from that situation or you can say, okay, this is an opportunity for me to like take a step forward and like do something. And in marriage, I think that even gets enhanced, but yeah. And I do want to add to just like going back over this whole interview. I don't ever want anybody to think that we're insensitive to the parents and the families who lost from last week part of us will never come back from knowing that those babies are never coming home. But you can't hear that, can you? I don't know what's happening. Our dog is like howling like a wolf. Um, But yeah, I just, I just don't want us to come off insensitive. It's easy for us to sit here and say, this is how you don't live in fear, but our babies are home with us. So yeah, because ultimately at the end of the day, we were not, I mean, like that affected by it, right? Like it was like very close, very like in our backyard, but like we got our two kids and that yeah. 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 There's a degree of guilt that comes with that. But I think you know, people talk about Nashville strong and it's like what they're talking about is the the strength of the community there. And I feel like the things that can undermine community are fear, our isolation, and it's like Yes. That is kind of a natural impulse is to pull away and like say, oh, we have to move or or like, I'm not going to send my kid to school. It's like, no, 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 no. Don't miss the yeah. point. Like, let's, let's make sure that we are preserving that thing that is so beautiful. And that's the community. Mm-hmm. But, and growing. And, you know, kids, kids do pick up on that. I mean, you, Sean, you started saying about, you know, how your kids can sort of feel the weight. Uh, you know, there's so many life lessons for young children to be able to see their parents sad or see them super happy and to know that emotions are okay. Um, even, you know, some little arguments, but just being able to see the resolution, I think, you know, bringing that forward, I think is a huge lesson, lesson for kids. You were saying Sean earlier, how your mom handled the FBI situation with your stalker and how, you know, you could see that in your mom, but and this is why I feel like you're incredibly inspiring the two of you with, and I don't, and I'm not saying that, you know, I just, just envisioning going through that situation. And it's certainly not how, if anybody else doesn't, isn't able to take that route, it's okay. That's completely understandable. If someone is locking themselves in their bedroom and crying for a few more days longer than you, well, that is absolutely understandable mm-hmm. because let's be honest, like this is a, 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 an absolute tragedy. No one expected. And sometimes it takes people a little bit longer, but, um, what I really, what I find very, very inspiring about the two of you and, you know, Sean and your family with your, your parents was that you were able to, you know, have that phrase, yours is God is good. And you were able to just tell yourself that, and your mom must've had something as well, that she was able to just break that fear, break that isolation and, you know, kind of join into the community. Like she didn't, she, you didn't, you, she didn't isolate you. You haven't isolated yourselves in a world when it would be okay if you wanted to, like it would be understandable. And so I think to just kind of clarify, that's why I find you're very inspiring. And that's why I feel like people could really take, you know, a note and it could help them, you know? So uh, that being said, I feel like if, for me, the note that I took, I literally wrote down, like, find your phrase. And like, when you're in that, and when you want to just hide inside your bedroom and lock all the doors, and, you know, not, not let anybody in, what is your phrase and, or your prayer or your meditation or whatever it may be, your lifestyle to help you break that so that you're not stuck in fear in your life? Because we could all get there, like from any of the number of things that are coming. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so thank you for, I know, I'm like, well, <laughs> uh, I'm a hands person, but thank you for sharing that because I feel like this is this turned like super meaningful. Uh, you know, we were having fun and that turned super meaningful and inspiring very, very quickly. Um, and you know, I had a whole lot of questions I was going to ask you like, 
probably question. Yeah, we've covered, we've, I feel like we've covered a lot and it became a little bit more inspiring and meaningful than just a fun loving thing, you know, sharing. So thank you for sharing about, you know, just your experience the past couple of weeks with what's been going on. And it just means there has to be a part three to this. We're down. Come on. <laughs> in person or, or yeah. it's not happening, okay? Yeah. yeah. Well, next time you're in Florida, we'll have Yeah, a, Sarasota we'll have is a great place, okay? Yeah. Just saying, if you guys want to come great. down for a beach trip. When we were when we were house shopping uh, or house hunting, uh, whatever you call it, we, we, we actually walked through and we're looking at what room could be a podcast room. Like, yeah. we were so yeah. excited, yeah. so excited about that. Yeah, so we're pumped to be a part of your guys' family made, and we really love what you stand for, and thank you for putting out, you know, positive, inspiring, but realistic uh, family material. It's not all just, like, you know, roses and butterflies because um, that's not life, you know? And so, but there's a whole lot of that too. Um, and so we have a new thing at the end of every guest, we're going to start asking, uh, you could get to choose between what you want to share. Okay. So, oh yes. and you each got to share something, you're, you know, you can't, you can't just, you know, look over at Sean Andrew and say, okay, you got this. You got to share, <laughs> okay. you each got to share a little something. Okay. Uh, so, and, and this is, it's just like sweet. And I feel like it could be really meaningful for everyone, a little nugget of advice. So for each of you, do you have advice for your younger self or you can share something your younger self would be proud of that you've accomplished now? Oh. Options, giving you options. You want me to start what you think? Or are you ready? I've got mine. Go ahead. Do your thing. Okay. Um, I spent way, so this is, I think it answers both. Um, advice to my younger self would be to stop caring so much what people think. Yes. I spent so much of my life um, making every decision, not for myself, but for other people, mm-hmm. to make sure they approved of what I looked like, felt like, said, did, acted, whatever path I went down. Um, and it just, I spent too much of my life not being me. Yeah. And I think what my younger self would be proud of is as soon as I became a mama, that went away. Good for and you. It was amazing. My babies were the greatest blessing to me that I've ever had because they gave me a different confidence that I've never felt. And it was pretty cool. That's awesome. It's been good for you. Mom, mom, it's been good for good me. On, on you. Uh, it's been good for you. I think, <laughs> it's been good. I think a piece of advice I would give my younger self would, would just be the phrase, this too shall pass. Mm-hmm. And I think that hits home because it's like sometimes when you're in the middle of something difficult, it feels like it's never going to end. Uh, it's like, I, you know, playing football, you had two days and it's like, oh my gosh, I got four weeks of like the hardest physical thing I can do, but also like this too shall pass. Right. And then on the flip side of it, I think it helps me, um, enjoy the beautiful moments of life more with understanding that this too shall pass. And like, uh, I've been into sunsets and sunrises recently. And I think part of the beauty in those types of things is that it is such a brief moment. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it, it's beautiful because it ends. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like in life too, like you just take things for granted. And so when you're, when you're able to understand like, Hey man, this, this phase with my three-year-old and one-year-old, it's going to end. It, it like, increases the urgency for me to enjoy this moment more knowing that it'll pass so that was, it already I know. it's not done i know so that's my advice but uh i love that so uh you know while you're three and one year older have like sticky hands and they're crying over who knows what you know just this embrace it this too shall pass and it's a good yeah, moment it's gonna yeah. end enjoy um, it <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you guys so much. I've for... been trying not to get frustrated with Henley doing her homework. Yeah. I just want to smash my eyeballs in when <laughs> Yeah, you, you guys have a uh... There's no reason that I should get that that frustrated. Yeah. Like she, you know, she's five. And uh yeah, I um She's not doing her homework or she just <laughs> no, the way she's... she's Well, so I'll give you an example from this morning. And her homework should have been done last night. Um, but she actually <laughs> she fell asleep at seven o'clock as soon as she got home from dance and slept through the night, which is rare. But um she's doing her numbers to thirty and um we got to twenty and then twenty one and 
she was going and she writes a one because she has to fill in the box and it's 22. She puts in a one. I go, Henley, that's not how 20 starts. How does 20 start? Look before. And she kept saying, I don't know. And then she would erase it and then put, draw in a zero and look at me. And I was like, no, Henley, it's going to be 22. What do you think it means? And then this is when I just go, so she'll erase it and then she'll start saying, I don't know it. I just don't know. And uh, when we know that she does know it. I mean, yeah. she knows. Yeah. So, you know, frustrating stuff from parent life, but taking a little nugget. That of had it, nothing to do with anything. No, we it really. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it though. I, I enjoyed love it. You guys. Oh yeah. yeah. So a little nugget of advice that we can leave this on is yeah. don't live your life to impress others. I am still learning that. Mm -hmm. And also this too shall pass. So Doug, this too shall pass with Henley and her homework. <laughs> yeah. And with that, thank you guys so much for sharing all that you have shared and being here with us and for bringing us in for our family made. We're pumped to be a part of your guys' yes. community and hopefully, oh, sound effects. What, Doug? Sorry. I have an applause button. Um, <laughs> what? Let's go. what is going on right now? I had no idea that was happening. I have an applause, I a like poo, it. crickets. We can't hear it on our end. Oh, okay. so oh you can't hear that? Oh, well, that makes sense. That's funny. Right. Amateurs over here. Listen, you guys got to teach us a thing or two. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much thank for being on the podcast, inviting us on. We're pumped to and, get this episode out. We're gonna we are excited to start this journey with you guys and can't Let's thank go. you enough. And I am so pumped for, for this relationship and, and this partnership. And I really am so excited for the content that's going to come out the content that we're bringing to people and getting to know you guys more. Uh, it's just really, really uh, holds a special place in my heart, you guys. So yeah, this and has so really been awesome. Yeah, no, truly. We, we, I've loved you all for a long time and we're pumped to be here. If anybody else out there who's listening also loves you and, and happens to not know where to find you, where can we send them? Sean's Sean Johnson on everything. Uh, all the platforms. Andrew is Andrew East on everything. No, I'm not. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> or Andrew East. But then if you want to find out more about Family Made, which is a group of creators that all are earnestly, not perfectly. No. Uh, that's not what we mean by wholesome, but earnestly no. uh, trying to put family first and, and do family well. Uh, then there's a whole slate of different shows that uh, you can find at familymade.com. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to connect to one. Um, if you don't connect with Doug or Jamie's or Sean and I's, then uh, hopefully you find it there. But we are so glad to know you guys and can't wait to get to know you better. Awesome. awesome. Us too. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks again. Thanks for being on. Thank you. How much fun was that conversation though? It was really an awesome conversation like honestly they are just so inspiring so humble so down to earth and we They're are so grateful that they invited us and welcomed us and wanted us into their fold which was amazing yeah, i feel i feel like it's like you know we're where we're where we're meant to be whether like in so many ways in life, like with you and what you're going through and then where we're living, it feels mm -hmm. like home. And then with this family made, it feels like we're part of a great community that we, we really enjoy these people. Yes. And so I feel like we're doing good. And for those of you listening, um, man, I hope that you're starting to feel good too. I hope that this brings you joy and hope this podcast, because we're yeah. doing it for you and we really, truly appreciate you. So thanks for listening yes. and, and your patience. Yeah. For, for this long. Oh my so. gosh. You've been asking for this podcast to come back for like for so long. I mean, <laughs> even while we were on the road trip, I was getting so many DMs oh, yeah. and I was like, I can't do another thing though. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're so excited to be back now though, now that we're settled and um, we're just pumped to have you here. So thank you so much. And also as always, thank you so much for your five-star reviews. We always give shout outs. So if you want to be getting a shout out, then please do leave us a five-star re review. We really appreciate those all right we will talk to you next week bye bye love you love you love you